What's up everybody, it's your boy Officer Dan back with another install vid. This time we're going to be tackling the Fueled Racing S13 LS Swap Kit. Boy is she a beaut. It's going to be a high level overview of the entire process, so let's get started. Keep in mind this is easier to do with the motor out of the car, but it can be done with the motor in. It's up to you. The motor we're using here is a 6 liter out of a GTO, uh, but you can use whatever LS you choose. So what we're doing now is just flipping the motor over and we're going to give it a little bit of a clean. Let me show you the custom fueled oil pan. It comes with a pickup tube, a 6 flapper trap door system, bungs for turbo drains, gauges, a fresh gasket, plus a big increase in oil capacity. Well done fueled. Now let's slap on the oil pickup tube. Make sure the O-ring is seated properly and that both surfaces are clean. Now bolt down the tube using your existing hardware. Now before you install the gasket, apply some gasket maker to all four corners of the front and rear covers. Slather the oil pan studs with some Loctite and then go ahead and install them to the block. The two 6mm studs go on the rear cover, the rest go everywhere else. Now tighten them all down and then go ahead and place the gasket on, pushing it down little by little until it's all the way flush. Now apply thread sealer to any of the plugs you'll be using and tighten them all the way down. It's always good to check the torque on everything, so do that often as you're assembling this kit. Here we're tossing some oil down the tube's throat to lube up that pump. Now once you've done that, go ahead and toss the pan on, just be careful with the studs, and let it go all the way down to the block. Now that the pan's on the motor, thread all of the nuts onto the studs, then snug them down in an alternating pattern. Now is not the time to he-man those suckers on. The studs under the wings will need to be tightened with a wrench. Now torque all of them down in that same alternating pattern. Here we are installing my sending unit for my oil temperature gauge. Awesome. Always remember to tighten your oil pan drain. Can't tell you how many times I've seen people mess this up. Now rotate the motor over a few times to get that oil pumping. Now the CNC mounts are a work of art using captured polyurethane bushing so you have 0% chance of the motor coming loose. These are marked left and right via stamps on the bottom so you don't mess up and install them backwards. Now go ahead and remove your old mounts from the engine, apply thread lock, then a washer, place the mount on, and torque down to 18 foot-pounds. Now flip the motor over and repeat for the other side. Here you can see both mounts installed on the motor and it's ready to be dropped in the car. Now when installing the fueled equipped motor into an S13 chassis, they recommend not doing so with the headers installed if going from the top down. Now get the motor in as close as you can, then drop the bolts down that attach to the subframe. Don't forget your washer. Line up the holes and drop the bolt down through the subframe. Now just do the same for the other side. Here's the motor sitting pretty on its fueled racing mounts. Next, we move under the car. We've slapped in our CD009 and are ready to install our Hot Boy Fueled Racing headers. Now, these can be a bit tricky to install, so you want to start by first unbolting your steering shaft from the rack and moving it out of the way. Next, slip the header up through the bottom, finagle it around until you get it close enough to throw an exhaust bolt in. Here you can see exactly how much room the fueled headers give you for steering shaft clearance. And here's a view from the back showing exactly how they fit in the chassis. Next, you want to casually jump into your favorite b-boy stance to line your steering shaft back up for reinstallation. Now that the right side's done, let's move on to the left. Starting in a similar fashion, slip the left side up from the bottom and attach it to an exhaust bolt. Fueled makes right-hand drive headers that will clear thicker than stock bell housings like ours shown here. Now you can see the right-hand drive header clears the starter bump no problem. Now that the motor's in, we can install the rest of the kit. Tighten all the header bolts except for the frontmost left one. We'll be using that for the dipstick. Now seal that sucker in at the bottom and use the last exhaust bolt to hold the top in place. Let's move on to the oil filter relocation kit. Fueled has a few options when it comes to this, with or without oil cooler, etc. So talk to them about your setup. In this setup, we'll be using an oil cooler, so this is how we ran our lines. Now if you stall your filter bracket where we did, you will lose the ability to run a front sway bar, so keep that in mind. When you do find a suitable place for it, use the provided self-tappers and install accordingly. Now get yourself a heap and helping of some thread sealer and put them on both of the provided AN adapters. Then tighten them down accordingly. Now route your lines to and from the oil cooler, paying careful attention to the in and out on the adapter itself. 
Now snug down the lines going to the back of the oil pan and you're pretty much done with this part. So let's move on to the power steering lines. Now the low pressure line is going to be the bottom most on the rack, so go ahead and install that one first. Next jump up top and thread the high pressure line into the power steering pump itself. Then snake the high pressure line to the top port of the rack and tighten it down. It is worth noting that I already had fittings in my rack, but Fuel does provide them with the kit. And that's it. You're done. It's time for some of this.